While Cataclysm is active, you gain unlimited spirit and deal up to 100 times increased damage. Well, the concept seems simple. We just gotta keep Cataclysm active. Like, all the time. I mean, surely they're not gonna let us do that because that would be absolutely broken and would even function on multiple builds. So I found a way to have 100% uptime on Cataclysm, and the best part is it works for more than just the tornado build that you're seeing here. I'll leave a build link in the video description where you can see the different variations for other builds that it works for. So far I've also tested a Windshare build and also a Stormcloud build which can both have 100% uptime on Cataclysm as well. That means you can use this as a foundation or a cookie cutter for other builds if you want to work with something around using the concepts that you see in this video. But we'll go ahead and cover the tornado build because I love tornadoes. It's worth mentioning that this build is super controller friendly, so if you're playing on console or just a player that prefers to use controller, then this is an awesome choice. So you're going to want to pop Blood Howl, that's going to be increased attack speed, and then you're essentially going to use Tornado. So you'll see that I have no spirit to use Tornado. So activate Cataclysm, and then you can spam away, and that is all you need to know to play this build. At this point, we're going to begin spamming Tornadoes and evading through enemies as our mobility. We're just going to evade around the map for the most part. You can move at certain times, but essentially recasting your Blood Howl, casting Debilitating Roar in order to reduce the damage you take, and refreshing Cataclysm when needed. Now, it's a lot easier to do if you're not talking at the same time, but if you keep an eye on the Cataclysm timer, you'll see that there's really no issue at sustaining this. You can just continually go through enemies. Here, I've got maybe an extra seven or eight seconds before I even need to refresh it. Here we can go refreshing it and just begin evading through enemies again, and this will go on forever. Refreshing debilitating roar, and so forth. So I think you figured it out at this point, and you're just spamming everything on your bar with the exception of your cyclone armor and your earthen bulwark. Those you're kind of reserving for when needed. The foundation is going to involve reducing the cooldown of Cataclysm. By default, this has a 60 second cooldown. Now, we've already dropped this almost to 50% of that, just over 32 seconds, and we have a few other tricks up our sleeve which are going to help reduce this while in combat, thus allowing us to have 100% uptime on whatever build we want. The first two tricks come from the Spirit Boons, so let's just go ahead and cover all of them while we're here, because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do half of them and come back later. We'll just start at the top to make things easy. We're going to take Wariness for 15% reduced damage from Elites. It's going to help our survivability. Swooping attacks is going to give us 15% increased attack speed. Just like other Tornado builds in the past, attack speed is going to be really strong. Since we have unlimited spirit, the faster we can attack, the more Tornadoes we'll throw out. Now, I would say that Avian Wrath for increased critical strike damage may become better as your gear continues to scale, say most likely somewhere around over 50% critical strike chance. But until that time, I would recommend taking Swooping attacks paired with Iron Feather. Now this is where the tricks begin, okay? We're gonna take Calamity, which is gonna extend the duration of our ultimate skills by 25% and Calm Before the Storm, which is gonna allow our Nature Magic skills to have a 10% chance on lucky hits to reduce the cooldown of our ultimate skill by two seconds. Now that we've mentioned those Spirit Boons, if you look closely at the tooltip for Cataclysm, you notice that this storm is actually gonna last for 17.25 seconds with a roughly 32 second cooldown. So we really only need to recover 15 seconds of cooldown time. By using Flicker Step, and this is actually not a great pair, and we'll talk about that when we get to the final affix, but in general, you're gonna pick up some movement speed. Decent for this build, although since most of the focus here is gonna be on doing the hordes in this particular season, we aren't moving a whole lot. In fact, we're staying in one room for the majority of the time. On top of that, we're picking up an enormous amount of ultimate damage. Cataclysm is an ultimate, so this is just going to work very nicely. The lightning resist is kind of redundant in this situation, unfortunately, but we do get damage reduction for close enemies. Excellent pickup on this particular slot, since we're going to be looking to stack as much damage reduction as possible just to continue pushing higher tiers. Lastly, every enemy that you evade through reduces the active ultimate cooldown anywhere from 2 to 4 seconds per enemy to a maximum of 10 seconds. Obviously, you're looking for a higher roll than this particular pair, but honestly, you could even do this with a minimum roll. As long as you have Flicker Step, you'll be in good shape for this build. So let's backtrack a little bit now and talk about how we got this cooldown roughly to about half of its original cooldown as well. Using Dolman Stone, which if you look at this at a quick glance, you think this might have no place in this build whatsoever. However, what we're most interested in is the affix Nature Magic Cooldown Reduction. This gives us a huge chunk to eliminating that cooldown on Cataclysm. Now it's also worth mentioning that depending on how your master working goes, you can take off 
much larger chunk as well. I was fortunate enough to roll a bonus on one of these cooldown reductions, but if you get multiple of these cooldown reductions, you'll need even less time, and you possibly could even eliminate Flicker Step altogether. By using a one hand and offhand, we can actually roll cooldown reduction as one of the affixes here as well. And on top of that, we get an extra aspect, and we are a little limited in aspects since we're running so many uniques in this build. Next up, let's talk about the combo of Tempest Roar and Mad Wolf's Glee. This has been seen in many seasons prior, and you might be wondering why are we using it here? Because if we're just looking to keep Cataclysm and Tornado active, we don't actually need to be a wolf. The reason for this is because of the massive amounts of damage that we gain from having increased ranks to Tornado. In order to do that, we use Tempest Roar to turn the Storm skill Tornado into a Werewolf skill, and then we add additional ranks by the affix on Mad Wolf's Glee, giving us four ranks in this case. You can get a maximum of five additional ranks. And if you take a pair of gloves that also has additional ranks to Tornado, you're getting a large benefit to the maximum number of ranks, and overall this is a huge damage boost, more than other aspects actually give you. Prior to getting the uniques, or if you just want to run a humanoid version, you can do that with some legendary items as well. Juggernauts is a great choice because this will allow you to cap your armor really early, say before you have access to all the unique items. You can also run Undying, and I'm aware that this chest piece is also a Juggernauts, but I did want to show the plus ranks to Debilitating Roar, and even the Debilitating Roar cooldown that you can get from Tempering. All this is going to add to your survivability. So you don't have to have all the uniques to get started on this build, but you do want to have some of these to at least get the foundation. That covers all the unique items, so let's go ahead and take a look at the legendary aspects we're using. Storm Chaser's Aspect, pretty standard for Tornado builds. This is going to allow your Tornado to seek additional targets. Vigorous Aspect, this can give us damage reduction while in a Werewolf. Now, of course, if you're running a Humanoid form, you'll want to swap this out. But again, just pick a Defensive Aspect in its place. Aspect of the Changeling's Debt, this is going to allow us to do increased damage when we're hitting crowd control targets. Everything's going to be crowd controlled for the most part, almost 100% of the time. We're going to have ways of just inflicting this crowd control through our skill tree and also our paragon tree. So don't worry about that, you'll be getting that benefit as well. Aspect of Retaliation, our core skills are going to do increased damage based on the amount of Fortify we have. I feel Aspect of Retaliation is the weakest of all the aspects in the setup, so if you're looking to swap one out, say for something like Rune Workers or another one of your choice, I would recommend taking this one out. It can be difficult within the Horde maps in order to keep your Fortify up, so you're not always getting full benefit from this, so you may get some benefit from something else, potentially even Edge Masters, which we're not running in this setup. Accelerating Aspect is the final one we're running here. Critical Strikes with Core Skills are going to increase our attack speed. Again, we're just looking to dish out as many tornadoes as fast as possible. So let's go ahead and dive into the skill tree at this point. You can take any basic attack you want. You're not going to use it on your loadout. You won't need to use it at any point at earlier gear levels or if you're running this build prior to having the entire setup, just select whichever one you find the most favorable. After those two points, move into the next tree. Here we'll put five points into Tornado. We'll of course pick up Enhanced Tornado. That gives us a chance to spawn additional tornadoes on top of the tempering that we'll have on our weapons. And Raging Tornado that is gonna allow us to get a chance to make enemies vulnerable. It's just a source of additional damage. One point in Heart of the Wild is going to increase our maximum spirit. Spirit is irrelevant since we're always going to have unlimited, but we do want to make sure that we pick up Wild Impulses. Wild Impulses is going to increase the cost and allow us to deal more damage. Again, we don't care about the cost whatsoever, so we're just getting pure raw damage here. Three points into Predatory Instincts is going to increase the critical strike chance against most enemies. Three points into Iron Fur, so it allows us to get additional damage reduction when we use Debilitating Roar, which we'll pick up lower in the skill tree and zero points into Digitigrade Gate, but I do want to mention it because it's still a useful skill. We're going to be in Werewolf form, we're going to get the increased benefit from movement speed, but we're actually going to primarily be using Evade to move around within combat, so we don't need to put any additional points here. One point into Earth and Bulwark, and then one point into Enhanced Earth and Bulwark. This is what's going to give you Unstoppable. This is kind of your failsafe. I have messed around with using Aspect of Metamorphosis in the boot slot in place of Flicker Step. Did not perform as well, but we'll talk about that within the variations. One point in Cyclone Armor for the strong passive that it provides to non-physical damage reduction. One point in Ancestral Fortitude. Three points in Vigilance. And you can place a second point in Ancestral Fortitude early on in the process, but eventually you'll be able to cap your resistances. Otherwise, leaving you an extra point to either place into Cyclone Armor, or you can place it further down in the tree to circle a life. One point in Blood Howl, one point in Enhanced Blood Howl, and one point in Preserving Blood Howl is going to give you a nice attack speed boost whenever you activate this, which will be very quick since Blood Howl has reduced cooldown every time you kill something, and it also provides a substantial heal that you're basically spamming, and it's better than your potion. One point in Debilitating Roar, this is an enormous damage reduction and quite spammable with this particular build. Enhanced Debilitating Roar is going to give you some Fortify, and Preserving Debilitating Roar is going to heal you every second, and you basically have this active all the time, so you're just always healing. 
You'll get three points in Endless Tempest from your gear, but it's not necessarily worth putting any more here, especially since you do one point to get there. The active cooldown reduction that you get from this is not worth the trade off of what you get elsewhere. So I just want to point that out. One point neurotoxin that's going to have poison enemies be slowed. More importantly, it gives us access to Envenom, which allows us to have some additional multiplicative damage. And we can run Toxic Claws, critical strikes with werewolf skills, which is going to include Tornado at this point. It's going to allow us to poison the enemy, which is then going to slow them or crowd control them and let us benefit off of all the crowd control effects like more damage. Three points in Defiance is going to boost Cataclysm and Tornado, so worthwhile here. Three points in Natural Disaster, which again is going to benefit both of those two skills against stunned, immobilized, or knocked back enemies. We will have some of these advantages through tempering on our gear. Three points in Resonance, Nature Magic skills still increase damage, again worthwhile. One point in Circle of Life is going to allow you to continually heal yourself every time you cast Tornado, and since we're spamming this ability, it's going to add up to a lot. Point in Cataclysm, Point in Prime Cataclysm for increased duration, and Supreme Cataclysm is going to make everything vulnerable on the screen. Three points in the Quick Shift is useful because we're casting Debilitating Roar so often. That means that we can benefit for shifting into the Bear form and then shifting back into Werewolf. As long as we spam this enough, we can actually keep up all the stacks. Three points in Heightened Senses. This is going to allow us to get some further damage reduction. Again, some movement speed as well, but we're really using Evade to move around in combat, so the benefit here is really the damage reduction. For the key passive, we're going to run Perfect Storm. This can give us a 40% multiplicative increase to damage whenever we hit something vulnerable, which Cataclysm is doing, also our Tornadoes are doing, Immobilized or even Slowed enemies. Critical Strikes from Werewolf skills are going to slow the enemy, so we have a lot of ways to benefit from this and make sure that we're always getting that 40%. Repair Gun Tree, again, this is typically easier to look at through the build link, but I do like to go through the glyphs and even the legendary nodes that we do activate, just so you can understand why we're taking them. Going to run Territorial. This is going to give us damage reduction against close enemies. A little bit of additional damage as well, but the main reason is just for that damage reduction. Fang and Claw is going to give us benefit to the magic nodes within range and also an increased multiplicative damage to any of the enemies close to us while we're in werewolf form. Both of these are really good. Damage to poison enemies, damage reduction from poison enemies from the magic nodes. Very strong since our critical strikes are making the enemies poisoned. And of course, the multiplicative damage is strong as well. Heightened Malice, since we're poisoning all these enemies, we may as well do 45% multiplicative more damage to them. Spirit, you'll get some additional increased critical strike damage, but more importantly, critical strikes increase the damage an enemy takes. Since we're attacking so fast, we can often stack this up to the maximum value and very quickly. A lot of benefit there. Thunderstruck has unfortunately been nerfed to a degree, but it's still worth taking. It's still going to provide 60% multiplicative damage, and you'll get this alone just from the gear in this setup. Outmatch also provides bonus to rare nodes. This can give us some maximum life, some additional nature damage, and even a little bit of willpower. We're also going to deal increased physical damage to non-elites and bosses. Tornado counts as a physical damage. Don't get any benefit for Cataclysm in that regard, but Tornado is going to be the main damage dealing ability in terms of single target or even the final bosses within the horde since they're spread out so much. Earth and Sky provides bonuses to magic nodes. Here we can pick up resist all elements. This is pretty useful. Core damage is also going to benefit our tornado. Top of that, we're also going to get 10 times multiplicative damage to crowd control or vulnerable enemies. They're going to be one or both of these at all times. Ancestral Guidance, after spending 75 spirit, you'll deal 30% increased damage for five seconds. Now we're going to be spending 75 spirit very quickly, so this should always be active. Werewolf, this is mainly taken for the 15% damage reduction in werewolf form, just stacking further mitigation in order to continue to push higher. And Lust for Carnage, you might be wondering why we're taking this. Critical Strikes with Werewolf Skills, Restore to Spirit. And the reason is, sometimes if you miss time the overlap of Cataclysm, you'll run out of Spirit before it's active. And we're casting so many tornadoes that they can linger on the screen and actually replenish your Spirit for several seconds, allowing that Cataclysm to come back up. At higher gear levels, you will not need that at all, and you can rearrange the points. But really nice early on. Now, I talked about a couple of other setups that you can run with this. I ran this with Great Staff of the Crone and Pain Gorgers using Cataclysm to apply the mark to all the enemies. And then, of course, the Claw and the Storm Strike to then explode these marks. This was really fun. Fortunately, it was not quite as good as Tornado or even Windshear, but it was probably the most fun of all the versions. Really enjoyable. Recommend that if you're not looking to push, but just want to play something that's enjoyable. I also experimented with Aspect of Metamorphosis using this as the unstoppable. Now, the tooltip here does mention that it increases the cooldown of Evade, and I paired this with Tibalt's Will. And interesting, what I found is that Tibalt's Will was also increasing the cooldown on Evade. So it kind of made this very clunky and difficult to use. 
Now it is possible, I just didn't really enjoy it, so I kind of abandoned that and went elsewhere. I think this is a bug or the tooltip of Tybalt's will is not accurate, but something's going on here because I still had increased cooldown even when Aspect of Metamorphosis was not equipped. The playstyle of this build is super engaging, so if you're somebody that enjoys hitting a lot of buttons very frequently, managing cooldowns, this is definitely a build that you'll likely enjoy. The maps for the hordes, as even as you go up tiers, don't change. You're just always in one room. So having an engaging build has really been a benefit and something that I've enjoyed so far in this season. Hope you enjoy the build or one of the different variations or come up with your own version using some of the concepts that I shared. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.